I think it's not a problem at all. I'll take that line of, of solving the problem. Congratulations, you just played with linguistics. Yes, I did. <laughs> it's no longer... I don't say... I don't think it's a problem. Again, coming back from the, the relativity ideas. I don't think it's a problem insofar as it doesn't harm us. Does that make any sense? It doesn't... The problem of induction... The problem of induction doesn't harm us. Not that the fact that the problem of induction beats us to death every once in a while. I'm just saying that the problem of induction doesn't necessarily provide such a big problem for us to live through. But seriously, think about it though for a second, right? If something were really a problem, okay, it would, it would provide a significant... It would provide a significant barrier to what we're to, to things we're trying to accomplish, right? Yet, I'll give an example out there. When you're talking about security studies for a government, okay, when you're talking about understanding intelligence, all right, and of course governments have, have track records of getting intelligence wrong. We get that. <laughs> but thank you, 2003. But but there's still times when government intelligence does actually work out, okay? But. Thank you, Iran. Thank you, Iran. Perhaps. Maybe. North Korea, maybe even. Um, Osama bin Laden. Second, second week, yeah. Osama bin Laden, oh, for instance. Well, yeah. Okay, yeah, we're going to talk later. Well, <laughs> oh, still. Anyway. Anyway, regardless. You're, the problem of induction would have something... The problem of induction would have something to say about seeing an event over and over again to, to establish some sort of, you know, of good concept, right? And that's sort of what you need when you're talking about intelligence and intellig intelligence gathering, Okay. You would need the problem of induction would have a, an issue there in terms of understanding how different states would work, or understanding in terms of understanding what threats might do. Yet it still sort of works out most of the time, and the other time it's attributable to human error, and not so much as into the problem of induction. So I'm saying, are there because there are instances where the problem of induction technically technically should mess things up, but it doesn't. Is the problem of induction still an issue for us? I'm sorry. I still don't understand how the problem of induction messes things up. It messes things up in the sense that we shouldn't. So going back to the going back to the black swan example. Yeah. We shouldn't trust that on the hundred first day there's going to be just black swans everywhere. Or there's no not going to be a black swan on the on the lake. The same way is why can't it be on the hundred first day of surveillance? We shouldn't expect somebody to do the exact same thing as the hundred as the hundredth day. Well, that might be specifically because surveillance and uh, intelligence requires such a specific and such certain unique circumstances in which what you're looking for is found. Yeah. It's, I mean, intelligence is just an example. It's one example of, okay. of many. Of course. Okay, okay. Exactly again, the, the, the problem the, of the, induction. The, right, it's the, it's the problem of induction, but why is it called the problem? Why isn't it called just the nuisance of induction or the slight annoyance of induction? <laughs> if it's, it's just semantics. It is semantics, it really but is. at the end of the day, if something isn't necessarily well, a problem, why are we calling it a problem and why are we giving it traction? Because if you're trying to attain knowledge, it is a problem and it really does get in the way. It, says it comes back to our idea, though, of why or, or what should we value as, as knowledge. I, in terms of my value... Now, essentially... I, my value judgment is that knowledge should be useful to me. Here, here, here's... Now, congratulations for that. Congratulations. <laughs> Where's my party popper? I oh need that. <laughs> Boo! Doo -doo -doo. Uh, okay, that might be your definition. From this conversation, yeah. what I've come to well, learn myself is that knowledge is that which, which we can come to have some kind of comprehension of stuff and things, a comprehension of uh, experiences from which we pass on to others. I don't think it has anything to do. Knowledge itself, I do not think has anything to do with whether or not, ultimately, it can be proven to be some great universal standard. Not all swans are white. As the ornithologists of the past have come to understand. And I, I, I really don't think that at the end of the day, it's going to matter whether or not uh, we can come to some grand universal statement. And now I just realize I'm playing right into Alessandro's uh, ultimate definition. Thank you. Thank oh you. no, he's, he's going thing. around making the Thank making you. the high fives. And Thank you. I would I would I would like to say that this has all been this is this podcast has just been a ruse to get Tavis to finally. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for... Uh, <laughs> no, but... <laughs> which is unfortunate, because from that last statement, I ultimately have to concede that... Yeah, it, it is... Uh, it is that with which uh, 
we make use of. Yeah. And, and, and from that use, perpetuate ourselves. I mean, and, and other ideas that uh, might come into contact As the with. primitivist, I must add the perpetuate ourselves because at the end of the day, I think it's all about the f- birds and the bees. No, uh, no absolutely. Uh, <laughs> I think it's it's a facet that comes into that definition. It's yeah, not but at, at the same time, you know, I, uh, have, having this understanding of well, I mean, coming from this conversation, having this understanding and knowledge, it really, really brings an interesting uh, conclusion for me mm-hmm. that it's really arbitrary whether or not it's right or wrong what is important is whether or not we can use it to perpetuate ourselves i think like what i've come to see from this conversation is the the distinction between innate knowledge the idea that we instinctually have some things for instance the, the throwing of the ball at you or the wrench that you mentioned I think wrench. Really? Because at the same time, I, I would I would argue well, against it, myself on instinct, but please, well, well, continue. Yeah, I think there's of a course, difference yeah. here. I think the important thing to realize here is that the, some things, and the, the distinction that some things are clearly instinct, and they're not necessarily knowledge, even if they come originally from knowledge, even if someone tells you that mm. touching a hot stove is a bad idea, it becomes instinct, and the idea that some things are conscious, active lines of thought, and that is knowledge. And I think that is the most important thing to understand when we're thinking about the definition of knowledge and what knowledge represents in our society. And because because same, instincts, uh, instincts could still be, de- are definitely still useful to you. Of course, of course. And, so, and instincts are useful, underneath. but at, at the same juncture, at, I mean, at this juncture of the conversation, I'd have to disagree and say instincts are not instincts. They are mere perpetuations of something that has worked, something that has yeah. been sure, useful they're yeah. but in they're the past. Instincts. But, yeah, but the, uh, no, they, they have been in, entrained in human instincts. I ah, I see. I see what's going on here. I think there's a definition between instincts that come a priori. Now we can get mm. into a priori. Uh, yeah, and then, no, and, some that, and then some that are instincts that are developed through time a posteriori. I, and and at this juncture, I would say there are no instincts that are a priori. I would say all instincts are inbreded within a person. From their a posteriori experiences, really? whether they be taught or experienced in their own right, could we say that there that maybe um, I would put it this way? Man, I've really just gone from one spectrum to the other. I know right? that's what happens when you get out of this room. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, could it be? Could it be that certain instincts, like instincts for physical survival, okay, fight or flight instincts, for instance, would you say that those are still a posteriori? Uh, no, no. Those are a priori be, in the sense that Because, I mean, I hate to go with the Darwinian argument on this, but I, I think it. it ultimately goes back to the most common recent amoeba from which we came. The death of an ancestor is going to... Well, the death of an ancestor isn't going to affect us because if we already exist and that ancestor has passed, then there will be nothing to learn from that ancestor except for their mistakes. So let's mm-hmm. say I have a parent and I have an uncle. I have both. And if ever my uncle listens to this podcast, Uncle Bill, I love you. You're a great guy. <laughs> but uh, let us say that this is a nameless uncle and a nameless parent. The parent has begotten me unto this world and the uncle has begotten his... Well, let's say the uncle has begotten no one. The uncle has the true misfortune of getting killed by something. Mm -hmm. And as my parent and my uncle are biologically linked, news gets back to my parent that uncle was killed by something. And from that news, it is passed on saying, don't get killed by something. Because if you get killed by something... It'll be bad. It will be bad. You will be dead and you will not perpetuate. So ultimately, I think what we have here is a, I mean, I don't think what we have, but I think what we can discern is a, a rubric, almost, not a rubric, a calculus of use, usefulness and how that usefulness ultimately perpetuates. Because even though that something by which my uncle was killed or the knowledge of that consequence of something by which my uncle was killed was passed on to me, it could come to a juncture when I pass that on to my own spawn. I say, don't do this because my uncle was killed by something. Oh, it could be totally wrong. Mm-hmm. And one of my offspring could be killed by a very similar related something 
I usually like to call these things X. I don't know why. I didn't. That's go fine there. because Y is not cool. Why? Why, why is just mysterious. philosophical? Uh, you know, my one of my spawn was killed by a very similar thing, and I say, oh, that shouldn't have happened. They were they were warned against that, but ultimately it doesn't matter because the usefulness through which it was imparted was arbitrary, and the other spawn that I had learned from the death of his or her sister or brother. Point being, usefulness is perpetuated through generations. Knowledge is perpetuated through generations. The fact that we, as Homo sapiens sapiens, have accumulated in vast societies is almost irrelevant because, especially today, as we can see with the internet and other telecommunications, knowledge is easily perpetuated or what we claim to be as knowledge is easily perpetuated. And from that knowledge, we will continue to perpetuate. No, you know, I I don't know, because that's still a sociological explanation for it, though. I mean, I, it's, it's not it's sociological. It's, it is epistemological, but tied in with a... Uh, it's, it's not, not sociological. I, I, I'm tying it that's... in with a filial concept, not sociological. Right, but we're still forced to say that our knowledge doesn't come necessarily 100% straight from us, if it did. No, I... I, I, I would agree. It, it totally comes from us. If I say you are... I'm, uh, us being your own individual person. Yeah, right? okay, just Alex. Just to be sure. Just be Alex, sure. You're, you're, you're conscious, right? I suppose so. You are conscious of me talking to you right now. I guess. If I were to say, Johnny got killed by a falling crane yesterday. Yeah. Would you believe me? Uh, sure, why not? No, Johnny did get killed by a crane yesterday. Did he object to it's, it's really upsetting me. Okay. Uh, now, which, It depends on trust, though. Now, what, another issue. Depends on trust. You can look it up in the news. You can go to his grave. Okay. Be my guess. He is dead. He, he was crushed dead. by okay. a he crane. He was crushed by a crane. He was crushed by a crane. You're saying I'm going to use that useful I've imparted bit of this. Ha- have you not experienced my imparting of this knowledge to you? Uh, yes, I have experienced it. You have experienced it. Therefore, would you not say that you are probably going to avoid falling cranes because they could possibly kill you? Right, but here's the other thing. Am I am I seriously not going to avoid cranes before you tell me this? Not that I needed another friend to tell me. No, that. no, no. But 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 let's say that this was the first time you were told of such a thing. So okay. Well, let, let, so let, let's say cranes, let's say you're so, six years old, and yeah, I say, oh yeah. my god, my good friend from college, Johnny just got killed. I Buy a falling crane. I don't even need to have a friend to call it. You let, can just be another six-year-old li- next li- to me. Little Alex, please stay away from falling cranes. If you see a crane and it starts falling, you should probably run in the other direction. Okay. But does that demean? Does that demolish in any way the instinct we should all have about self-preservation? Which really no. I mean, quite frankly, isn't I... it just isn't avoiding a crane a subset of self-preservation? No, I, I think self-preservation is something that is. Uh, Passed on in its own right. If you don't teach something to preserve, to pre- itself. preserve itself, I don't think it will. If you leave a baby out in the I'll, I'll, out I'll in give the you cold, a hand here. The dodo. it'll die. I'll give you the helping hand here. The dodo. I mean, the baby dies because it's it doesn't have capacity to, yes. to solve itself because its nobody problems. taught it. I'm no, not... no, because the baby's just weak. The baby. Yeah, I would say the, the baby, baby is, the baby is weak, weak. But when weak, the baby but comes splaying, when the doesn't... baby comes out of the <laughs> uterus, yeah. it. What does it know? What does a baby know when it comes out of the uterus? It just knows how... It knows, I guess, how to... I, I, I think... So, solid bodily functions. I, I think, that, actually, I think that's almost objectionable. That. Actually, I, I think we should really be consulting an obstetrician about this. We should be consulting somebody. But, but I would I'm say sorry, this, you, 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 yeah, you had something to say. Oh, well, I was just going to quickly say that the baby, I'm sure, has self-preservation principles and will have self-preservation principles, it just doesn't have the capacity to do that yet. Yeah, exactly. But that's that's not necessarily true, because a baby, if you were to offer it food, will take the food. Well, of course, but you're... you're so offering... it does have the capacity okay. to do so. Wait, take the food or just eat the food? Because I don't think a baby has the motor capacity to feed itself. That's the problem. Well, no, I'm sorry, the take and eat, I, I was using in, in the same context. If you sh- hold a spoonful in front of the, the baby's mouth... There are many a baby, as I'm sure many of us have experienced, that will not eat the food. Right. But when it really comes down to the nitty gritty, if the baby is in the snow and it has been abandoned, it is a derelict baby. What if the baby's just hungry? And you, well, that's 
ex- precisely my point. The yeah. baby is so hungry to the juncture that it can't discern whether or not it wants broccoli or peach puree baby food. The baby is going to eat what it is given. Which shows that it has self-preservation instincts. Yeah. Yes. And it has self-preservation instincts, it just doesn't have the capacity to go harvest that food. So it'll still take the food. But and if why it does cooked, it have self... How, how has it come to get self-preservation instincts? Because that's just because natural that's the, among that's, all beings. That's the problem of life. That's the problem of life, <laughs> that, unfortunately. Also, I'm, no, I, that, I, I really yeah. would like to... But again, we're, we're drifting away from knowledge here, because now we're... We think we're and now we're getting into science. <laughs> So let's, I, I, I think we should, yeah, so let's get back to, to but knowledge. I, at the same time, I think they're all, all very important contributors to the conversation. No, definitely, because you have to, yeah, you, we did have to define We it. do have to make some concessions into other fields, God forbid. Yeah, God forbid. <laughs> I, I think probably, I mean, we're running we're running short on time. I think we're running well over time. Quite frankly, even though we're running short, I think we've had a great conversation. We have. I think, I, yeah, a great conversation. Definitely better than aliens. Yeah, this yeah, is so much more Remarkably better than aliens. Remarkably better than aliens. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I think the only things we're really still caught up on, still this whole instincts, former knowledge idea, I think that's it, that's sort of coming down to sort of, to a philosophical impasse. I like to call it where it, it just it is it'll take more than an yes. hour which is, of, of which conversation. Is, of course, totally interesting normal. also because I personally have had a complete almost a three sixty on uh, yeah on your definition on, of on, on my belief on instincts and knowledge. Yeah. I, I, mean, I, I, I went in the beginning of this conversation from the belief that only instincts are truly possible, and now I'm saying only knowledge is possible and instincts are a form of knowledge. So that, that's an interesting, uh, I mean, just personally, an interesting development in my own line of thought. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and that's what I've learned from it personally. How about you? I, I've taken away from the fact that, um, I've taken away the fact that when we were talking earlier on, really early on, about the um, the the sharing of knowledge, I was I was definitely more partial to having to have sort of self reflection on it mm-hmm. before that was set. But I think we've sort of explained to ourselves that sometimes you don't really need self reflection to impart knowledge on yourself, or to at least have it stick around. I think some things just are bits of knowledge at some point or another, where you don't necessarily need to go out so far on the limb to trust mm-hmm. somebody. That you receive the knowledge. What's your uh, lasting impression? I guess my lasting impression would be with the giraffe example, specifically the idea that innate knowledge is both innate and learned. That, like you said, you can have the innate knowledge of knowing that pain is bad and that you don't like pain, but at the same time knowing that somebody has to tell you that pain is bad or that, t- excuse me, that touching a, a flame is going to cause you pain. So the idea that knowledge. Has it's sort of a, a two-sided coin, if you will. So you're a moderate. So you're yes, a yes. Ooh, <laughs> philosophy doesn't exist. I know. Well, maybe I'll tread some new ground. Well, oh. I'll, I'll put this out as a, as a oh, last yeah. question to our to our listeners here before we before we get going. Uh, is there maybe is there maybe a call now, considering Zachary's point here? Is there maybe a call to say a priori, a posteriori, instinctual, learned knowledge, whatever you want to call it? Can they go hand in hand? Can they go hand in hand? And actually. Is Perhaps. it impossible to have full knowledge without having both involved? Yeah. In the yes. same, obviously, I think, I in the think same it's topic. That's a really good question. It's a really good question. Please uh, answer, if you will, in the comments uh, below or to the side or off wherever you're reading this or listening to this, rather. Yeah? I think we definitely yes. come up with I think this is a great springboard for uh, a part two podcast about knowledge. Uh, definitely. I think, I, I, think I think we should uh, definitely revisit, revisit this at a, yes. at a, at a future uh, podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think though that's that's probably where we want to, where we're gonna cut it. Yeah. So right. you know, thanks again for listening, everybody. Yes, thank it's you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you wonderful. very much. Yeah. So uh, let's do this then for uh, Troilus and for Zachary. I'm Alessandro, and uh, thanks for having listened to our last second episode of the Armchair Philosophy Podcast. And gentlemen, pleasure debating Zach. Certainly. Alex, you too. absolutely. Well you done. Right. I, the, I'll too. say this: the next podcast will be on ethics. Ethics. Wow. It's a big topic. It With is a big topic. Hopefully, from Man. my side. <laughs> Biomedical ethics. Yes. Biomedic. Hey, bring, what you, bring it what you want. It is an interesting modern concept. Yes, I would. I would say for the more classical or ethics, that's where I'm. That's concept, what I'm looking issue. forward to. Yeah, issue. Yeah, it is. A, it is an issue. Personally, classical ethics is yeah. where I'm. Is where I'm going to be looking at. Zachary, I think I'll be going with uh, applicable ethics, sort of the, the practical ethics of everyday life. Yeah, which totally ties into biomedical Definitely. as well. Either either and, way, and it'll be I, a good podcast. It will be a good podcast. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, if we so. have. A, 
come to know anything from the podcast of knowledge, it is that the podcast of ethics will be twice as good. Yes. <laughs> as opposed to, that is that's a big claim we're making. That's, I think I just we, we outdid you it. in hubris. It. it could be, it could be. All right, uh, thanks everybody, thanks for listening. Thank uh, we'll look forward to seeing you again in a week's time or so. All right, goodbye. Goodbye. Cheerio. Farewell. <laughs>